you've taken your pre-licensing real estate classes, you've done a background check, congratulations, you're not a criminal. You took your state exam and you passed. First, second, or third time, it doesn't matter. You've paid your 511,000 fees just to get started in real estate. Finally found a broker that isn't going to rob you of your soul like Ursula did them poor unfortunate mer people. And now you've got your business cards, you've got you a good old pair of lemon pepper steppers on, a reliable car, and at least a half a tank of gas, and you've made your way to the office. You're using those nostrils God gave you, and you're saying, wow, I'm a real estate agent. But what do I do now? I'm gonna tell you in this video, What do you do after you've taken your classes, gotten your background check, passed the state exam? You're amped up off of that and you're like, woo, I'm ready to go sell some million dollar houses. <laughs> Hold the front door, friend. Why should someone with a million dollars trust you to be their real estate agent when you don't even know what you're doing? Friend. I wrote some notes down because I feel like, number one, one of the things that you're going to need to do or have is a real sense of being self-driven. I feel like most self-driven people have planners. Get you a planner. Get you a little notepad. Whenever you hear something that you don't know, write it down. Review it so that it comes off of your brain or comes out of your mouth very fluidly you don't want to be stumbling when you're talking to prospective clients so i would say there are going to be three main things that you're going to have to do within your first week actually i'm just going to say indefinitely throughout your real estate career you need to be focused on gaining knowledge number two you need to be focused on building confidence and number three becoming a valuable asset to your clients. Let's start at number one, knowledge. Real estate vocab, you need to know and be well versed in the definition of these words. And when I say well versed, know what they mean, but also know how to explain it in layman's term to your client who knows nothing about real estate. For example, what is a binder? What's the difference between a binder and a down payment? What are closing costs? Why do you need to know these things? Because outside of a client being pre-approved for a loan, they need to have a binder, down payment, and closing costs. It's not just about qualifying for a mortgage. Some other things that you're gonna need to research constantly throughout real estate are different types of loans and knowing the difference between the loans. You need to know what the qualifications are for a conventional loan, an FHA loan, a VA loan, and if it's cash, it's cash. And I know what you're saying. I'm not a mortgage lender. Girl, friend, sir, neither am I. But I'm definitely well versed with the information so that I can be an asset to my client and I can lead them into the right direction if they aren't pre-approved. And even if they are pre-approved, I've definitely taken a client who is pre-approved and shoved them towards the lender that's going to help them. And sometimes that means ditching the first pre-approval and getting a second pre-approval. Shop around, baby. Shop around. I can definitely say that writing a contract is probably the most intimidating aspect of being a real estate agent because you finally found a house for your client. Now you need to write a contract and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's probably one of the things I should have been practicing on instead of walking around the house 
Like you won't sell in Sunset, girl, friend, sir. And your client is like, I want to write a contract right now. Your broker should really help you on your first contract to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Once you figure out how to write a contract, you'll be able to figure it out. But the first one is very intimidating because it's like, okay, I know my client's name, but what's the name of the, the seller? Because I've only dealt with the seller's agent. How do I find the land ID? How do I find the, the documents, the disclosures? You're going to learn all of these things through your brokerage or you can use some of the self-help videos that you can find online. I like to listen to YouTubers talk about writing a contract online when I'm driving or when I'm cleaning up the house. Like right now, if you're not even around the computer, you're still learning, you're still getting the knowledge. It's the, it's the best way in being able to regurgitate things back to your clients. So practice on reading contracts, practice on writing contracts, practice on reading through the details on the property and what kind of financing the seller is accepting, whether it's cash, conventional, FHA or VA. It's super important. You don't want to waste your time looking at a property setting up a showing for your buyer and your buyer only has a VA loan and the seller is only accepting cash or a conventional loan. You just wasted your time and now you look stupid. I'm talking about myself because that's what I did before. I know some of you guys are going to have a lot more suggestions so Leave that in the comment section down below. We are here to help each other and be friends in real estate. The more I really feel like the more friends you have in real estate is going to be helpful for you as well. Because guess what? You might not work at the same brokerage. If I have a friend in real estate who has a new house on the market, it hasn't even hit the market, they're going to call me and be like, hey, friend, I've got a client that, you know, needs a buyer. Do you have any buyers? or vice versa. I call up my friends in real estate and be like, I am looking for a three bedroom, 2000 square foot house for a buyer. I can't find anything. Do you got something? Oh yeah, girl, we got one coming up on the market. Make friends. I should say acquaintances. Make acquaintances, okay? But don't be a mean girl because if you're a mean girl, guess what? Mean girl, you come to me with your buyer and I've got 10 other buyers who've written a contract. Yours might go to the bottom of the list. I'm just saying, it really does happen that way. Like, mm, we're gonna, I'm gonna, legally, I have to show my client all of the contracts that have been presented, right? But in what order? <laughs> I can persuade my client to be like, you know what? I think this is the better person. I think this is a more reliable contract because at the end of the day, that really does happen. Oh my gosh. Prime example. I wrote a contract for my client. It was a three bedroom, three bath, 2000 square foot town home. We came in over asking. We came in with the binder and the down payment and she's got money for closing. Everything is locked in, right? She has an FHA loan. But instead, the seller chose another buyer, smoke and mirrors. They talking about they got money, woo, woo, woo. It fell through. And now, guess whose door they came back peddling to? Ours, honey. Even if a deal looks so good, you really got to look through all those contracts and it's going to be your job as the listing agent to figure out who has the best deal, whose deal is really going to go through, who really has the money, who's lying. Because there really be some people that be like fluffing up the paperwork and they really don't have the money in the bank. They really don't have a down payment. They really don't have closing costs. Proof of funds, please. Don't overwhelm yourself in your first few weeks even months in real estate just focus on the basics vocab writing contracts and making friends acquaintances a part of building confidence is just being 
well-spoken and being well-spoken is just having the information readily available in your head and being fluid with how you repeat it. You can get good at this by practicing scripts that you can find online. Your brokerage might have it in a booklet for you. Again, Google is going to be your best friend. Practice on your introduction. How are you going to introduce yourself to a future buyer? In my mind, when I see a person in real estate and they're very sharkish, I think they're not confident. They don't have a good flow about it. They feel like you know, this might be their last sale. They don't know when their next meal is going to come. When you're super confident in real estate, you're going to know that what's for you is for you. It may take you some time to build up, you know, your pipeline, your clients. That's okay. But you don't want to come off too pushy. So practice, you know, your introduction. How would you introduce yourself to someone? Even if you're just out having dinner how would you casually bring up the fact that you're a real estate agent without walking into the establishment and shouting to the top of your lungs like you got some issues i'm a real estate agent here's my card ah. in order to be a valuable asset you have to realize number one it is not your money it's their money you have to respect their money respect the fact that they've done the work to get themselves in line to buy a home or they've done to work to keep up the value of their home and they're entrusting you to sell their home, right? So please don't walk around acting like you are the gift. And in the words of somebody who said it, don't kick the gift horse in the mouth. Any hoodles, I will see you guys in another video. It'll probably be a vlog. I just got really busy the last week. I didn't post a video and I think the week before that. It's been, and it, it, it may have been 10 days already, but I've really been out here real estating you guys. I have a client who is under construction right now, waiting for her home to be done. I have a client who was pre-approved and I've been trying to find her something in this crazy market. And then I have a third client who I am in the approval process with getting them pre-approved. They are a military vet and they work for the post office. So I wanna get them everything that they can from any down payment assistance out there and working with the right lender, even if we have to shop around. That's what I've been doing. So I've been completely busy and my kids are out of school for the summer. So with that being said, make sure your notifications are turned on so when I do post video you don't miss it i'm trying to post once a week but again like i said i wouldn't miss it for 10 days because child i've been busy but anyway i love you guys so much and i'll see you later and again make sure you give this video a big thumbs up i'd like to get to a thousand likes on this video it just helps me be a little bit more visible in this very 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 saturated platform so um, the more likes, the more visible I become to people who are looking for videos like this. Um, it really helped on the last video that I did about how much I made in real estate and how much it really cost in real estate. So again, I love you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.